This is Ryan Elliott for Boxing Social in association with Betfred in Leeds. We just concluded the final press conference ahead of Lara Warrington 2 this weekend. With me, trainer Dave Caldwell. Dave, how have you been? I'm very good, thanks, mate. How are you? I'm good, thank you for asking. Now, let's talk about why you're here. Hopey Price back in action this weekend for a local lad to be fighting at Headingley Stadium in a title fight. Doesn't come much better for someone at this stage of his career. No, it's very exciting for him. And also, it's a, it's a local derby, isn't it? Um, Zayda, same, being from Leeds as well, same as, same as Hopey. So, there's a lot of local pride at stake. Um, and it makes it a big fight, and it makes it a fight where I hope he can kind of like break out a little bit more in his in his home setting. In terms of Zaid Hussein, I'm sure you've seen plenty of him. Uh, big local derby going to be coming this Saturday night. What do you make of him as a fighter? What does he do well? He's a good boxer. Um, very very long, very rangy, very awkward. Um, got really long arms. Um, likes his right hand. Um, he's a good fighter, but. He's, he's more experienced in, in, you know, than, than Hope is. He's 16 and 1. But when you talk about experience, more experience in what? He's, he's walked to the ring more than what Hope has. But if you look at the actual opponents of both men, has, you know, has Zayda so, saying out of his 16 fights, has he got, if you were to compare 5 versus 5 of Hope, is, you know, is there much, much more of a difference there? Um, I think Hope is fought a couple of guys that have come to win already in, inside these five fights, which I think counts more for real real term experience. Um, levels have been a lot bit better, um, and the sparring that he's had has been phenomenal over the last couple of years for a young prospect. So, and that's regular, consistent. You know, Kid Galahad, Lee Wood, Jordan Gill, Leon Woodstock, Reese Bolotti, Akib Fiaz, a lot of good fighters. You know that is that is had a lot a lot of rounds, not one-off spars, a lot a lot of rounds with. So he's learning a lot. And then you look at his his pedigree as an amateur as well. So you know I don't think experience-wise um, is what's going to cost the fight. You know I I know Hope has been sparring ten rounds for a long time in in the gym. So he he knows what ten rounds are all about. Again, it's different on fight night. I understand that the the big thing for experience is going to be. Um, boxing in front of his own crowd outdoors in his in his home city you know that's the big thing but then is it because he's boxed outdoors on an AJ undercard you know in a prime slot prime, prime slot um, so his experience in that terms you know he's, he's boxed at fight camp without a crowd fight camp with a crowd he's, he's ticked a lot of boxers in his five fights you know um, so I, I, I just think with his mentality, how he seems to be, I think he handles the occasion perfectly. And if he handles the occasion perfectly, then he'll put on a really good boxing display. Last time you, you and I saw each other was at Fight Camp, Dave. We were talking about that Claudio Grande fight and it being good preparation for, for a fight like this. Going back to it, how happy were you with, with his performance and how ideal was it for him to get some rounds going into this with a relatively short period between? Yeah, he, um, it was very it was very important for him because he's, he, he'd not fought for six months. so prior to going into a fight like this, I needed him to have, have a little run out. But there was wanting fights, you know, there was offering me fights where there were guys that weren't gonna come to win, they were just gonna you know, just see the rounds out. Doesn't do anything for him. Like I said, if he's sparring with all these people that are good fighters and giving him problems and, and, and teach him and, and giving him an education in the gym, what is he gonna get out of fighting something that's not gonna come to win? Grande, I knew he was going to come to win, and he did, and he constantly came to win for the whole duration of the fight. It was supposed to be an eight-rounder. We had it cut to six on, on the day before, um, and it was, you know, it was a perfect fight for him. It really was for his development. Uh, Style-wise, a little bit different um, to what Zayda saying is, obviously. But you know, tall fighters like Hope, they prefer fighting guys that are tall or, or as range as them rather than rather than somebody who they might shoot over the top of and feel exposed and vulnerable with. It is a big night of boxing, Dave, so I just want to touch on a couple of the other fights while I've got you here. Lara Warrington, too, top of the bill. Brilliant fight. The bookmakers can't split them. What do you think Josh will do differently this time? Um, I don't know, but I know he has to box with his brain a little bit more. You know? And I spoke to his dad earlier on, and his dad said he was, he was pissed off because he didn't listen to him in the corner. He didn't listen to him pre-fight. You know, uh, he didn't go out there round one and do what they're supposed to do, but then he didn't adjust after round one. Um, 
he fought with his heart and his balls more than anything and he can't afford to do that because otherwise it's potentially the same thing is going to happen the, the worry for me is if he gets tagged early you know it's, it's boxing Lara's going to cash him at some point if he gets tagged early um, and the crowd and, and all that atmosphere does he get et up by that and does he start firing back straight away and, and fall into those same sort of traps again if he can if he can be disciplined in himself then I think he can he, he wins you know he gets a really good win um, and I think he, he can win the fight um, I can't seem to remember I think I think Lara might have been troubled with a couple of body shots early doors in the first fight um, but then he just went gunslinging um, so maybe he, he even maybe Warrington even stopped him later on um, if he's disciplined and if he's clever but if he fights with emotions, especially if he gets tagged or you know, or just with the atmosphere, comes out and he's, he's raging, he wants to get to work and get you know, get revenge in front of all his home city, then that's then that's dangerous. And so I can generally see both men winning the fight. Connor Ben's back. Uh, he was meant to be at fight camp. It was unfortunately postponed. Brilliant fight for the Leeds crowd though. Adrian Granados. They've both promised violence this week. They're both expected to be an absolute war. How good a fight is this for Connor Ben at this time with someone who's very much been there and done it? It's great. It's about it's about his development and and so currently experience. And again, you know what we're saying about Opie. There's no good train at this intensity and sparring the people that these guys are sparring. If they go in and fighting guys that you know you're going to win, it's just a case of are you going to stop them? You know, once once you've had a certain amount of fights, it's time. You know, if, especially like Connor, he's looking at world titles. He's looking at getting into the mix with your big names. You know, they start mentioning people like Porto in in his in his same sentence or his name. Um, so you, you can't waste your slots, you can't waste your fights by fighting guys that aren't going to come to win. Granados is coming to win. He's a good fighter, you know, he, he's experienced. But I just feel that Conor Ben's just developing at such a great rate, you know. He's, he, and, and he also, his, his um, ring savvy, his smartness is getting a lot better. You know, he's not just the marauding swinger that's looking to take you out with, with each shot that he throws. He's looking at set you up now. And when he delivers his, his power punches, he's delivering with, with speed that you don't see. Um, so I think that'll be the difference between them at both. I think I think Connell will just be one step in front of him. Don't get me wrong, I expect it to be a tough fight. But I think he'll be just, just that little step in front. And, and I think the speed will be, will be the difference. One really intriguing fight, Dave. Giovanni Strafon's back after he blitzed James Tennyson. Maxi Hughes is in the form of his life. So let's just start there. What have you made of this this resurgence of Maxi Hughes? He's been on the most brilliant run, one of the best runs in British boxing right now. It's been, I think it's been great. You know, Maxi came through the hard way, boxing on small shows, getting his crack on the big shows and getting beat by the big promoters' prospects, then going away, rebuilding, doing it again. You know, I had a couple of, couple of nights like that. But he's, he's a perfect example of showing to, to every pro out there that when you have setbacks, keep going, keep doing, keep trusting your process and keep working because well, eventually experience comes and you start using the experience at the right times and then things fall into place. And if you look at his running that he's got now, it's fantastic. But then you listen to how he speaks as well. He speaks like a man that's, that's confident, but got confidence in his experience now to be able to operate at this, le- this level. So... I think he's going to put on a, a, a brilliant performance. I, I, listen, he's not an idiot. He's a, number one, he's a good boxer, but he's also a southpaw. But he's not an idiot. So he's not going to stand there and start gunslinging and trying to test who's got the biggest balls out of him and Strafford. He's going to box, and he's going to use his smarts and use his brain. And I think, I think he gets a great win on Saturday night. Just a couple more from me before I let you go, Dave. I've just called you as we were all sort of leaving the press conference. Uh, Big 24 hours for boxing. There have been all kinds of breaking in the last 24 hours. I want to scout the sky, the start, the start with the sky deal rather. Um, we saw them come out and announce the, the fighters that they've, they'll be working with alongside Boxer and the, the US content they're bringing in as well. What do you make of the announcement we saw yesterday? It's good. Good for boxing, good for fans, good for, you know, good for the fighters because there's more than one platform um, for fighters to, to get work and to potentially be signed and, and be promoted and, and, and looked after. Um, sky have got a track record of like 30 years or whatever in, in, in boxing so you know it's, it's a great pedigree um, I think every fighter that's on there now will be really excited I think the whole, whole thing what, you know, when zone was announced 
it was a little bit quiet. I know Sky made a bit of an announcement, look, we're not done, but then it just went quiet and people were just you know, kind of waiting what's going off, what's going off. But um, now they know. It's, it's exciting. And, and they're adding in the boxer tournament as well, which if you remember when, when Prize Fighter was going, when they got the matching right, it's a really good night. It's a really good night. I mean, you don't try and be too clever with it, putting in too big a name that fight on, you know, not wanting to lose rather than just going out there and making a name for themselves. These tournaments are great, you know, they're good fun, they are what they are, they're not, you know, they're not going to please the purists, but if you stick in one of them in every so often, along with the top rank content, which you've got to say as a boxing fan is brilliant, you know, um, if you're sticking that in, along with building up the next generation of, of, of talent, I think it'll take a couple of years, don't get me wrong, because you're going to look at it and you say, well, look at look at the names that are on the zone, look at the names that are on, that are on the sky, and you say, well, it's not really a, a, a big enough stable but that's where they have to invest time and energies and, and, and actually build the build the names of, of these kids that they've got developing through because they've done it in the past you know so if it's gone about the right way I think it's I think it's exciting and the last one Dave we, I spoke to you at Fight Camp about relinking with Derek Chisora and working together again David Higgins was on our website yesterday saying that the clock's ticking for Chisora Parker 2 do you, have you heard anything more than us about that and when Derek will next be out? Uh, it kind of told me roughly what it's looking like, but there's nothing nothing set in stone, nothing signed yet, so it really don't mean anything, really, to be honest. Um, we're just training, you know, we're just training to, to, to improve every day and, and to just work towards a day that will inevitably come, whether it's Parker or somebody else, I don't know. Um, uh, Derek's got his own team looking after him um, in in terms of negotiating and deciding what fights he's going to take. I just train him. So. All right, Dave, I'm going to let you get away. Thank you as always for speaking to Boxing Social. Catch you soon. <laughs>